ever looked at the hierarchy and asked yourself, why did they make it so plain? I mean, there's so much opportunity for more visual information, and yet they give us just a bunch of boxes. Well, let's fix that in this tutorial by making the hierarchy explode with information. Well, maybe not explode, but at least give us a little bit more visual information about what components the game objects are packing away. So without hesitation, let's add a static class under our editor folder called hierarchy icon display and get to coding. Okay, well, this isn't a mono behavior, so let's get rid of that. And as I said, I was going to make the static class and we'll get rid of this and we'll get rid of that. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, first thing we're going to do is this is going to have lots of editor functionality. So let's type in the using Unity editor. The next thing to do is put in a attribute at the beginning, which says initialize on load. Now, what does that do? Basically, that calls the constructor on this when Unity starts, when it launches, when it initializes. There you go. And you might have seen this as initialize on load method, which you can do and you can put that above a method in this particular class. But in this case, I'm only interested in actually initializing on load the constructor. Here we go. So we'll pop in. Now what are we going to do? Well, we want to basically get whenever the hierarchy draws a particular item. And how we do that is we get a callback to hierarchy window item on GUI. So we'll subscribe to that. There we go. And we'll generate a method that we're interested in. Obviously, we're not going to throw an exception. OK, so what does this give us? Well, it gives us the selection rectangle, the rectangle for the particular item, each item in the hierarchy. And it also gives us an instance ID for the item in the hierarchy. Now, what can we do with that particular instance ID? Well, we can do this. We can use the editor utility class and the instance ID to object method. And we can pass that that instance ID and we can get the game object for that particular position in the hierarchy back to use. And obviously, we're going to check whether that's null or not. Now, obviously, once we've got the object, we're not going to be able to get the icon from the object. We're interested in its components. So we put in something like this, where we get all the components for that particular object. And we obviously do some checks. It's not null. And we also want to make sure there's actually a component there. So we check the length isn't zero. Right, so we've done our checking. Now we're interested in which component to use. Now here comes an important point. If you just used components zero as the component of choice, you're always going to get back the transform or the rect transform. And you'll just be putting icons down for that. And that's just as boring as the boxes. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to come in here and we're going to say, if the component's length is greater than one, then we'll use components one. Otherwise, we'll use component zero. So we use the second component. And the second component is basically the non-transform component, whether that be your character component or your box collider or anything else. Now here, I'm stating that basically the most important component on each game object is the first component after the transform, or transform if there's no first component. That doesn't have to be the way you do it. If you have a particular priority list for your components, then you could have a lookup to say, OK, these are all the components. These are their priorities. And I want to basically always get the highest priority component. And you can even set that as an attribute on all your components and do that here. When the initialize on load happens, you can create that lookup. But here I'm and in my projects, I always have the most important component as the top of my game object. So that's how I've set this up here. So now I have the component I'm interested in. How am I going to get that icon for it? Well, we're going to get the type of the component. And then we're going to create a GUI content, which is going to be our icon. And we're going to use some functionality from Unity from its editor GUI utility class. And it's a method called object content. Now, what does this do? Well, it goes into Unity's little black box and it says, give me the icon for this particular content. I'm going to use it. What it also does is it gives you the name of that particular item and it sets it in the text. But we don't want that because if we left that up, what would happen is it would write over 
all of our game object names. So our content we're interested in is just the icon. But you can add one extra thing, and this is completely optional. You could add a tooltip to it. And what would we name this tooltip? Well, we would just basically give it the type name. And what this does is if you see an icon, you're like, I really don't know what the icon does. You can actually just mouse over it and get the tooltip to say it's a transform. You should know what a transform looks like or it's a line renderer or something like that. So it's an optional thing there. You could just press on the object and suddenly you've got the game object up in the inspector and see what the actual component is. But for us and me, I'm going to pop in a tooltip. Now, the next thing to do is to actually say Okay, hang on, is there an image? Because sometimes this won't actually return an image for a particular component because it's not listed in Unity's little black box. So we just want to make sure there's one there. If there isn't, we'll just return out and let the boring box that's been on Unity all this time, we'll let that just survive. And finally, the last thing we want to do is we want to come in here and say editor GUI dot label field, the selection rectangle and the content to do the drawing. So now we have lots of icons popping up and everything is well in the world. Well, not quite. As you can see, we've come across our first problem. The box is obviously still there, taunting us from the background with the icon just hanging out right above it. We're gonna need to cover that up and we're gonna need to add a rectangle in the exact spot just before we draw our icon. So before our label, we'll come in here and we'll pop in some code. In this case, color, and we'll get the gooey color. And then we'll come in and we'll say, okay, I'm going to need a background rectangle to do that drawing. And we'll start with the selection rectangle we have. And we'll say the background rectangle, the width, because obviously we don't want to draw it right across the whole thing and cover up the name and all the rest. What we'll actually do here is we'll say, okay, how big is our icon width? It's 18.5. Why I know that, don't ask, it took a while. Okay, so editor GUI dot draw rectangle, background rectangle, and we'll take in the color. There we go. And now we've come across our second problem. What color should this rectangle be? I mean, it needs to blend in with the rest of the hierarchy. You see, there are actually eight different colors we need to concern ourselves with when the item is not selected, when it is selected, when it's selected, but the hierarchy window does not have focus. And finally, when your mouse is just hovering above the item. But wait, I said eight, not four. Well, guess what? We have to do this for both light and dark skins. Unless you don't have any crazy people on your team using the light skin, then just stick with the dark colors. Anyway, now to compound this problem. Unity doesn't give us a straight access to these colors. So what do we do? Do we delve through all the code, find those colors, sort itself out? No, we just cheat. We capture the screen in each state, drop these screenshots into Photoshop, get the color, convert the hex to a normalized value and create an entry for it. Or lucky you, you could just look at the following code I've written out here and just copy it down. Alternatively, if you just want a single color background for your icons to make them pop, well, that's your choice and you could just add that color in here. So what we'll do is we'll call that class you just saw, which I've named Unity Editor Background Color and we'll just put get and then we're going to provide it with these three little pieces of functionality which is, is selected is hovering and also we check also is the window focused okay so let's start with is selected well is selected is pretty easy we just go selection dot instance ids dot contains oh if we come back there we go. If I could type it right, there we go. Contains, and then we'll just provide that with the instance ID. That's all it is. That's where that instance ID becomes quite helpful again. And we'll chuck in is selected. Okay, now, is it hovering? Well, is hovering, what we can do is we can say, get the selection rectangle, and we can actually just say, does it contain the mouse point? So, oh current mouse position, there we are. And that will tell us, is our mouse hovering? There we go. But what about the last one, is window focused? Well, this is a little bit harder and I'm gonna explain why. 
because we don't actually have an easy way to get in there and say, is this window focused at the moment? Unity doesn't really give us that. But what we can do is obviously, like most of these things in this channel, is we can cheat. We can work it out. So we'll come back up to our little constructor here and we'll put in a one-liner called editor application dot update, which will then create a method for called on editor update. So what happens is every time the editor updates, this thing gets called. But what are we going to do here? Well, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to paste in some code and then I'm going to walk you through it. There we go. So what have we done? Right, well, every time the editor updates, it calls this function. And we're going to say, get me the hierarchy editor window. And we cheat here. We basically come into the Unity functionality get window and we pass it the name here. Well, you have to pass it a type and that's what we do. We get the type and we pass the type the name of the editor window. And that is unity editor dot scene hierarchy window. And don't forget to put that it's under unity editor. So that will get the window for us. Great. But what are we going to use that for? Well, we're going to use that in a comparison. We're going to say, does the hierarchy have focus? Well, it does if there is a focused window and that focus window is the hierarchy editor window that we just found. Now, what I do is I actually store this in this little static up here, just so I don't have to keep doing this every time Unity Editor updates, because you don't want to do that. It's expensive. So we do it the once, we pop it in here, and then we do a comparison against that each time to set that hierarchy has focused here. Excellent. And how do we use that down below? Well, we just come into here and we go has Focus with the hierarchy. Excellent. Back to the editor and we can see how wonderful and clean our icons look, giving us all some great visual feedback as to what secrets they hold. Now, one thing to note at this point, we have a couple of prefabs here of Sentry and Space Laser. Space Laser in the back, Sentry is the gorgeous robot in the front, and they're all living in this beautiful nature manufacturer world. And I'll leave all the links to these assets in the description if you want to go and get them for yourself in the asset store. I think they're still on sale. They might be when you watch this, or they might not. You check it out yourselves. But anyway, we have these prefabs, and some of them will get icons, some of them won't. But do we want icons on our prefab? We could stick with them having just this blue cube here. And this is completely up to you whether you turn it on or turn it off. Me personally, I have a preference that enables me to switch these on or off. So if you want prefabs to all be the blue box and not show any icons, that's fine. Or you can have it the other way around. But how do we do that? Well, let's pop back into the code. And in here, what we'll do is we'll add a couple of lines just in here. And we'll say if prefab utility, and here is the function we want, get corresponding object, from source, and we'll just say object, we'll say, is it not null? And if it is, there we go. So if it's not null, we'll return, basically. So what this does is it basically says, is this actually a prefab? And if it is, great, we'll leave it alone. We'll basically, this will re be returning an object. And if it returns an object, it is a prefab which means it's not null, so we return. But if it's not a prefab, we'll continue on with what we're doing. And now if I save and come back into Unity, we can see that now our prefabs are both those blue boxes. But wait a second, I still see an issue. Do you see it? Keep looking, but while you do, make sure to hit the like button if you're getting something out of this video, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet to enjoy the satisfaction of not having to search for the wonders of this channel every time I drop a video. And if you're feeling really generous, consider purchasing one of my tools from the Asset Store to help support this channel, or even just download one of the free ones, because, you know, it will make your project super powered. I'll make sure to keep a link in the description for you. With that all said, have you found the issue yet? It's right there, and it's the light. You see, that icon's just too boring, and it's kind of lying to us. You see, this is no normal light. It's a directional light. 
In fact, if we press on the game object, we can clearly see on the component, it's got a completely different icon. So going back into the code, where we have the null on our object content method, we now add the component as the first option. And if we come back to the editor, we can now see we have our directional light showing us the way. And on top of that directional light, we also have icons for our own script. In this case, the sentry spawn and the zone. And if you're interested in adding icons to your own scripts, well, funny enough, I have a video on that and I've put it on screen for you to watch right now.